Today's lesson, we are going to learn how to start a new transaction in zip forms. This transaction will be a residential listing. So you've gone to your listing agreement. You've secured uh, the fact that they want to list the house with you. And now you need to come into your zip forms and create that listing transaction. So from the transactions page, we will hit new. Then we will hit listing. So it's that we start a new listing. We will enter the name or the property address. Uh, for this example, we'll use this property address. Okay, and you can use the address, the client name, or both. We put in the street address of the property. We put in the city. We put in the state. Now, as soon as we put in the second, the, the state, you'll watch the zip forms record connect field will highlight itself blue. You can select the record connect. This is a feature on zip forms that will go out to public information, search information based off of the property address, and it will pull back pertinent information such as the seller's name, the APN, track, lot, other legal descriptions of the property. So you don't even need to put the zip code in since Record Connect will find that for you. So this is a residential listing. So we're going to hit residential. And as you scroll further down, um, you probably will not have this agent field here. Uh, this is because as the broker, I can choose different agents in the office. Uh, to run this listing through so I can create these transactions for people. But you will see this section on templates and you will notice that the personal template that you've created for your residential listing will be in the templates field, personal residential listing. But you will also see a global residential listing and this is the one that we were talking about in the other training where the office has a series of templates as well. So both of these templates, the global and the personal, are going to come together when we start this transaction and we'll show you what this looks like. So we'll hit save. So as ZipForms is building the transaction for you, one of the first things it will do is access the record connect feature So this is Record Connect. You can see with this street address, here's the address of the property we've entered, the city, the state, the zip, the county, the assessor's parcel number in two different fields here, the legal description. So we have the track, the block, the lot, the lot number, the year built, and the zoning. So these are all things that it's going to bring into the transaction. Let's look at the seller. So there are two names for the first seller uh, and it will put those names in every order possible. So if there was a middle name there, uh, it would be the first name, middle name, last name, first name, last name, middle name, then middle name, first name, last name, middle name, last name, first name, and then last name, first name, middle name, last name, middle name, first name. The reason why it does this is it does not know exactly the name of each uh, seller or owner. So it's going to put all the possible information, all the possible uh, possibilities in list form. So, of course, you're going to know your clients. You're going to know which names are the right names. And here we go here because we have a middle initial. So you can see all the different variations of the seller's name. So we've picked the seller's name for seller one and seller two. 
and when we select yes to import this data you will watch here that all of this data has been imported we have the street address the state here's the lot number the zoning the parcel number the legal description it has all uh, been brought into the transaction when we look at the parties tab we will notice that on the seller side the sellers names seller one and seller two have been brought into the transaction now of course uh, since this is uh, your listing it does not know their email address so when you click on that party that particular party in the parties tab you will have a place to put in the email address right so email would go there now uh, another f quick fact here so you see this area about signing representative we use this when the seller the selling party is not a natural person so when it is an LLC a corporation even a trust that when the trust is the owner or seller of the property this field might say the uh, trust right this so that would be the name of the seller the joshua arantia trust in which case the signing representative would so this would be the natural person who is signing for the trust and you would put their information here and then what this would do in your transaction is everywhere where the seller's name belongs, the name of that trust LLC or corporation will correctly be in that spot. But when you send out your digital signatures, the signing representative's natural name is what will be signed. So this is how you set it up for a um, representative capacity, capacity signing okay so that was a little bit more advanced but it's good to take a look at that now so you'll see here seller one has been changed to the trust seller two is still the natural person now let's take a look at our documents earlier when i had you do a template we went into the cover sheet for the listing and you put in your personal information in the cover sheet under the brokerage the seller's brokerage so let's go take a look there again now this time the cover sheet has our seller one which is the trust seller two which is the natural person the property information is starting to be filled out here with the address the legal description the APN number we will also notice that the year of the the house was built is inputted and then now the seller broker information area. This is where you in your template had come in and, and put in your personal information, your name, your cell phone number, your license number, and your email address. But notice now that the global template also brings in the brokerage name, the brokerage uh, license number, and the brokerage street address. So it is now more completely filled in. This prevents you from having to type this information in every single time you do a transaction. We'll go ahead and go back and show you the rest of the listing template. So if you notice, there are a lot of folders and a lot of documents preloaded into your listing transaction. Um, this is the global template at work. So instead of this being a blank field, we have a lot of information that is preloaded into your transaction. So the folders that run down the left side here correspond with the folders that you see out in front of you. There are placeholders for all of your listing documents because this is a listing agreement. There are placeholders for all of your sales documents once this transaction goes under contract there are placeholders for all of your disclosures advisories one for uh, all of your reports repairs and invoices so this would be your pest reports your septic reports your roof reports your well reports could be 
any invoices or estimates and your request for repairs would be managed here. Miscellaneous documents would be for any other various documentation that you may have on this transaction that is not gonna be covered by one of the previous folders. Closing documents. So these are the anything that has to do with compensation from the escrow company. This is where we keep our legal services forms uh, which uh, provides our clients legal services uh, for the life of the uh, transaction after it closes. Um, also, anything having to do with disbursements of funds and your closing statements, your HUD-1 forms that come from escrow after the transaction. We have a folder for communications and we can show you how to turn uh, your email strings into PDFs, your text messages, into uh, PDFs so that you can keep track of the communications. A folder for offers and another folder for dead offers. So uh, when an offer comes in on your listing, we pull it into the offers uh, folder and we try to negotiate it here, keeping it out of the sales documents or out of the general folder just to keep your transaction under better uh, organization. If we have multiple offers, we could create additional folders in the uh, offers folder for those different offers. Once we've executed an offer, it goes out of the offers folder into the sales documents folder and any other subsequent offer that was not accepted moves over to the dead offers folder. Uh, so this is how we keep great organizational structure in our file. So let's just talk about the listing documents at this point in time because we've just signed or we're trying to get this listing signed and get moving it towards market. So inside our listing documents folder, you will find uh, the two main forms that you need to run a transaction. The first one being the residential listing agreement itself. And in many times we are taking this agreement more than 24 hours prior to listing because we have to have time to prepare the home and take photos so we are almost always doing a seller instructions to exclude the listing from the multiple listing service or otherwise known as form s-e-l-m so these would be those two forms and they're here ready for you to open and fill out and again as we go to the form since we've done our record connect and we've had our template all of this information is already being filled out so we have seller one and seller two again the trust in the natural person the corporation's information is already filled in with license number as well as your personal information as we move to the listing agreement itself we will notice the apn has already been put in the city, the county, uh, the zip code, all the information is already in here. So now we just have to come in and fill in the pertinent parts of each contract uh, from date prepared to listing uh, price and compensation. And as we go to the last page, again, we will see all the corporate information and personal information for the agent has been listed in here the trust information for the trust if you notice here the email this was the email for the designated signer so if we were to hit the entity seller um, we would then pull the uh, authorized signer we'd go here and so it would look somewhat like this as soon as i put in the authorized signer for the entity it will put it here as well and this would be probably something along the lines of a trustee so we would put trustee here so now this is what a, a proper entity or a representative capacity looks like the name of the actual trust is still the seller of the property but the name of the legally authorized signer as put here will uh, up here in this section in, in this paragraph will then also copy that down here it will send to the email address of the authorized signer the authorized signer's natural signature will go above the name of the trust here 
This is how we do that properly. Uh, so that uh, shows us how we do a, a residential listing transaction. And next we will move on to a purchase agreement. So where we can not only use the record connect, but we also uh, will incorporate the MLS uh, uh, connect feature as well.